All right, before you do anything, before you watch this video, hit that subscribe button. You see it up there. Subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. Peace. Welcome to the Slide Gets Tech Simplified channel. And today, I got a rock star of a lady on here. Her name is Sarah Blakely, and she is going to share her story with us, and we're going to be happy to listen to it. So, Sarah, would you mind sharing with my audience your background and how you got into IT? Definitely. And thanks for having me, Sly. It's really amazing that you're putting this together. And it's so, so important, especially in this day and age, to have this kind of visibility around women in tech. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to talk about all things marketing, all things AI. Yeah. So um, a little bit of my background. I am a little bit unconventional in the sense that I actually started in the public affairs and nonprofit sector. And for me, my kind of basis for that stemmed from early childhood when I always was asking, you know, why? Why do these things work the way they work? Like, why does a reindeer have antlers? Why does a fire hydrant have the shape that it has? Yeah. And for me, I've always kind of asked, you know, why are things the way that they are? Why do they work the way that they work? And it's less of a questioning in the negative sense and more just kind of wanting to understand why things are the way they are and kind of looking at that. And uh, so for me, I started early on kind of in journalism in high school. I was working for the newspaper, kind of doing all of that. And then when I got to college, I really started discovering my love of marketing and how that background in journalism transitioned into a love for marketing. And that kind of started when I was doing these internships at these different nonprofits. And I really started to have these opportunities to dig into marketing and to see, oh, well, all of this, these why questions, all of these kind of, you know, why does this work the way it works? Or, you know, what kind of people are interested in X, Y, and Z? With marketing, it's the same kind of thing, but almost better because you get to ask those questions and then you have the numbers to back it up. So you get to look at the data while you get to ask the questions and come up with the creative. So it's kind of best of both worlds, I would say. That's great. So how do you see your education playing a part now in the beginning of your career? And how does it help you out throughout your career? And did you do anything along the way to kind of, you know, intertwine them more to kind of um, help you out in your day-to-day -day roles? Fair question. Uh, so for me, I decided that I wanted to really focus on marketing and graduated from Seattle U with that degree in public affairs mm -hmm. and nonprofit leadership, mm -hmm. kind of segued into marketing and nonprofit. And then after a few years of doing that, really wanted to see how else marketing was applied in different industries and different sectors. So kind of going back to that why question, going back to that kind of why are things the way they are? Or why do people think the way they think? So from there, I started working with creative agencies. I started working with for-profits, you know, really digging into different kinds of marketing for different groups of people. And that was fascinating and really, really interesting to see all of the different elements that play into marketing in those different sectors. So kind of going off of that, I ended up at an entertainment and technology law firm. And that's where I really started to discover a passion, not just for marketing, but also for specifically uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. What does marketing mean to you? So for me, marketing is a blend of psychology, futurism, and realism. It's really thinking about what do people want and need? What is the potential for us to provide? And what is the feasibility of us providing that? Okay. And how does market and help you when you're dealing with artificial intelligence? Well, lot, lots of different ways. I would say initially, AI can actually already be integrated into marketing, and it already is being. If you look at a company like HubSpot, for example, with CRMs, or you're looking at how to create increased brand engagement, you know, we've got things like chatbots, for example, where you go to a website, 
and a customer has a higher likelihood of having a positive brand experience because they're getting their questions answered in an immediate, timely fashion. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to marketing and AI, there are all kinds of avenues that it's already being used and there's so many more opportunities for it to be integrated. And one more question is, what are some of the misconceptions of artificial intelligence? There are many misconceptions about artificial intelligence, for sure. I think the primary one is that it's evil robots that will take over the world, which is certainly not the case. AI is being used every day. Most of us already use it in so many different ways, even just on our phones, trying to find the nearest grocery store or trying to order the next pair of running shorts that we need it. So AI does not have to be as intimidating as people think it is. It's much more tangible if you really break down all the different ways that AI is being utilized. Yeah. And I guess question for you, what would you have told yourself earlier in your career? Is there anything that you would have done differently if you had the information you had today? Honestly, I think it's, it's a lot easier to look backwards and connect the dots and say, oh, okay, this made sense. Mm -hmm. But when you're in it, sometimes it can be really difficult to connect those dots moving forward. So for me, my path may have been fairly unconventional, yeah. but I learned so much in each of those experiences and I took all of those learnings into the next experience I was in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every experience I've had it's challenged me in different ways and it's challenged my perception of marketing in different ways. And so I see that as a strength because it's yeah. allowed me to look at new challenges and to look at new sectors and say, Oh, well, why, why is this like this? You know, why are we doing it the way we're doing it? You know, is there something else that we can consider something else that we can evaluate? That's great. And uh, I got a question for you. So I know you mentioned to me that you learned about artificial intelligence and how does it work in business. So if I'm a, uh, either in a, a student looking to get into that or a company looking to implement automation, where do they start? How do I get started? And maybe that's two different questions there. If I'm a student, how do I get started? And if I'm an organization, how do I get started? Yeah, I would say Definitely a few questions in there. All good questions, but definitely layered for sure. Um, initially, I would say if you are an individual, it's really important to just start educating yourself. You know, I've always been a very curious person. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was really starting to dig into, oh, artificial intelligence. Well, what does that actually mean? Because there's, you know, a lot of perceptions around what artificial intelligence means. But in terms of the business community, especially, what does that actually mean? So I started doing a lot of research. I started looking at, you know, experts in the field like MIT, like HubSpot, like, um, you know, Microsoft, and kind of looking at those different experts and really digging into how they're using artificial intelligence, how they project artificial intelligence being used in the future. That's kind of how I started digging into that. And ultimately, kind of starting to do that research on my own and, you know, asking those, those questions about that future industry, that's what ended up leading me to getting a certificate from MIT, their Sloan School of Management. So I have a certificate from them. Um, it's called AI Implications for Business Strategy. And that was kind of a foray for me from taking my marketing curiosity and my AI curiosity and blending those together for business integration. That's great. Um, so how was it at being at MIT? Like, was it um, everything you thought it would be? How was the program? And what do you think um, you, what did you learn? What was the most interesting thing that you learned when you was at MIT um, taking that artificial intelligence? certificate oh it's a good question because i loved all of it to be okay. honest <laughs> but the nerd in me really enjoyed all of it um i would say coming from a marketing background for me it was especially important to understand how this could be integrated into business mm -hmm. not just from the technical side but also from the more non-technical side 
So really looking at how are other companies using AI? What are the benefits of other companies integrating AI? How is that being done? How could that potentially be done? And that was what was most interesting to me and most helpful about taking that course. Mm-hmm. was really kind of digging into those questions. Okay. So a question for you is, um, if I'm a company, right, and mm-hmm. I'm listening to this right now, how, what can I do? What would you start off? What questions are you asking um, if you're consulting with a customer and they're thinking about getting into um, artificial intelligence? And I know it's going to be different for each vertical, and that's, that's a pretty mm-hmm. generic question. But um, if you have any ideas, what would be, how do I consider that if automation or artificial intelligence is right for my business? I think the first question to think about, and obviously it varies by industry, but one of the first questions to think about is why would we want to use artificial intelligence? Mm -hmm. And that can bring up a host of questions. You know, are we looking to be more efficient? Are we looking to, you know, maximize our profits? Are we looking to generate improved brand awareness and customer engagement? You know, those are all examples of answers to that question that businesses need to be aware of when they first start that process Mm -hmm. because if they don't have a clear understanding of why they want to look into artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. it can get a little convoluted smart okay and then my this kind of goes well into my next question is i know you said you're curious and if you follow me my hashtag is always be learning because and you might have met, I, I'm up there with you. I'm always trying to understand more and learn more, right? So from you, what books have you uncovered or podcasts or just helpful resources that cured your curiosity or continue to feed your curiosity, um, learning more about artificial intelligence? Sure. So for me, it's been a blend of continuous learning with artificial intelligence, marketing, and then also just really focusing on mindfulness in terms of like how to be a better individual, a better leader, you know, really a full, a whole, whole person, a full rounded individual. Mm -hmm. And I think especially this year, more than ever, that's really come to the forefront for business professionals is Mm -hmm. what are we doing that could be improved just in terms of like human to human contact and best practices. So for me, On the technical side, I actually really enjoyed Tools and Weapons by Brad Smith. I think that's a great book. It kind of assesses both sides of the coin. You know, technology, I think, is a human-made magic, so to speak. But with that, it means there's light and there's dark to it. So it's really digging into all the elements there and the gray areas. So I think that's a great book. Um, The Fourth Industrial Revolution is also a great book. It's by Klaus Schwab. Mm -hmm. And he was the chairman of the um, World Economic Forum, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's a great book that talks about how, you know, we've been through historically these different revolutions in time, these different industrial revolutions, whether it's the invention of the wheel or, you know, all the way up up to AI. And uh, it talks about kind of how the technologies that we're developing now are really creating the fourth revolution. I think that's a great read. Um, in terms of mindfulness, highly, highly recommend Jay Shetty's Think Like a Monk. Okay. It's a, it's a, he was a business you know, entrepreneur turned Buddhist monk, yeah. and he really focuses on intention and purpose and really being clear with how you want to live your day-to-day personally and professionally, which I think is super important now more than ever. Definitely. And that was great. Those are some good books. I make sure to put the links in um, the YouTube channel below so they'd be able to find that. Um, I want to ask you a few more questions. Is what's, What do you think is your top two characteristics? I think it's one is your curiosity. Uh, but what, is, what else would you say is your top two um, characteristics about yourself? Top two characteristics about myself. It's a good question. Definitely curiosity. Definitely. I'm always learning. I'm always asking questions, always just wanting to discover why things are the way they are and really looking at just how things have become the way they've become. Um, I definitely think that's a, that's a big one for me. I would say the other one is 
definitely passion. I'm very passionate about what I do. I love marketing. I believe in artificial intelligence, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to applying it for business strategy. Mm -hmm. And I'm eager to see that continue to be adopted more broad scale. Okay. And we're seeing that this year, you know, in 2020, that has been, I think one of the, one of the interesting things of 2020 is we're seeing this, this broad adoption of technologies that otherwise, you know, had been adopted by some companies in certain industries, but because we have drastically changed the way that we operate, businesses and the way that we live day to day technology in many forms has finally been able to be adopted by more industries and smaller businesses and all kinds of people. And I think that's really exciting. Yeah. So I want to, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I want you to do a bold prediction. 2030, how does it look and how has artificial intelligence uh, matured and been helping businesses? What are you thinking? I definitely, would say I think there is a, a conception that robots are going to take over the world. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the case. Yeah. And quite honestly, I've kind of enjoyed some of the integration of robotics into our everyday life, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's seeing, you know, that they have the test robots that come in that are trying to deliver mail, mm -hmm. or you go to a hotel and they have robots that are dropping off toothbrushes mm -hmm. or You've got um, robots like Sophia that are giving speeches at international conventions. You know, that, that's great robotics. I'm thrilled for that. Or, you know, anything that Boston Dynamics does, you know, you see them with robots that are learning how to jump and do backflips. And that's great. That's great. Um, I think in nine years, artificial intelligence will definitely be more integrated into more industries. I think we're seeing leaders in the industry now definitely like figuring out the different avenues that AI can be integrated. Mm -hmm. But I think we'll start to see mid to smaller range companies really starting to invest in that technology and really starting to embrace the benefits of integrating it into their bottom line. Yeah. And that's what I'm excited for. So maybe a little less flashy, but definitely like cutting edge and that's and that's pretty cool because you can see it coming down to the smb like um i work as like a microsoft engineer right and you can see little elements of artificial intelligence when you're updating your powerpoints or you know predictiveness inside of your emails right um some of the stuff they have in like automate features now so it's starting to make its way into smb so they can have mm -hmm. those things or you see like me as a, um, a video content creator there's a ton of um, little things i can use from um, like certain marketing widgets that i can use to get automated data make my life um, better or in terms of automation i could do some integration with if if ifft right um, to use that within my um you know my my marketing or gathering information or certain tools, right? So I, I could definitely see that. So that's a great thing uh, that you pointed out there. So let's fly into the last question. How can my audience stay in contact with you? Because this has been a fantastic meeting. I want to go longer, but I think now what we got to do is take it offline. So if they need to find you, what's the best place for them to um, contact you on? Definitely. Um, LinkedIn is usually best for me. You can find me at Sarah Blakely, S-A-R-A-B-L-A-K-E-L-Y, Seattle, S-E-A-T-T-L-E. Or on Twitter, I'm always looking at AI content and updates on Twitter at C Blakely, S-E-A Blakely. All right, perfect. Well, that's all, folks. Sly Gittins and Sarah Blakely are out. Peace.